Hello everyone. Welcome to Mentor. My name is Pranay Sharma and I'll be your lecturer for this term. The topic that we'll be considering today is number system. This is going to be session number one for grade nine. Uh, this is something that we have already gone through, right, in grade uh, eight, grade seven. But uh, what is new in it? Why we are reconsidering this chapter in grade nine? Because you will be having a lot more to be discussed with respect to number system in grade nine, right? The actual phase starts uh, from grade nine itself. So we'll be uh, having, you know, a deep dive of what we call rational number, what are irrational numbers, and we'll be, you know, uh, projecting irrational numbers on number line as well. So this is going to be an introductory session. So I'll uh, be, you know, giving you a brief and an oversight. And what we have already covered, that I'll tell you that this is something that we have already covered. We know what counting numbers are, right? In grade eight, grade seven, uh, you you must have learned this, but you still will be reconsidering them. Whole numbers, rational numbers, fractions, how fractions are different from rational numbers. I'll be giving you an insight on this as well. And then we'll be, you know, uh, reconsidering the, this in, in terms of what we say, sets and subsets, right? But that is, uh, that will come later on. For, uh, for now, we'll be, you know, only discussing what we uh, were already equipped with. However, few new things are to be appended. So we recap means we have already covered this in previous grades, but we'll be reconsidering them. So natural numbers are also known as counting numbers. The denotation for natural numbers is capital N. And as you can see that these are counting numbers, so it will obviously be, you know, getting started from one and it will go till infinity. One, two, three, four. Three dots represents what? That is going towards infinity. It is uh, structured in a different way. So we have different classification of sets, SETS, right? That we'll be discussing uh, in foundation batches uh, when, you know, situation arises. But this is a denotation that you need to remember. So it is uh, actually placed in curly brackets. We have three types of brackets parenthesis, square brackets, and curly brackets. All of them have uh, got their own importance, but, uh, you know, we'll be uh, reconsidering this when we'll like, actually be discussing uh, about parenthesis and, you know, uh, square brackets and curly brackets, right? And what is the priority order that we should be giving to them? Fine. Whole numbers are something that starts from zero and the denotation will be capital W. While integers are plus, minus, that means negative numbers, positive numbers, along with zero. Zero is considered as neither negative nor positive. So that is why this is actually, you know, a different phase in which we can get this uh, situations analyzed. I plus, capital I is the denotation, but if I write I plus, plus is in superscript. That means that represents what? Positive integers. I minus represents what? Negative integers. But zero is neither negative nor positive. So this is something that you should be, you know, uh, keeping in your mind when you will be dealing with integers. Rational numbers are any numbers. Okay, for this, we'll be, you know, taking help of our whiteboard. So any number which is of this format. Just a second, I have not connected my pen tab. So any number which is of this format, P over Q. That means the one that has rational number as uh, the one that has numerator as well as denominator. This comes under the category of rational numbers. But there is a catch. This Q cannot be zero. However, this can be an integer, but it cannot be zero. Right? So integer minus zero. However, P can be zero. So can I say that P can be any integer? I? Right? So P belongs to integer. Q, it too belongs to integer except zero. Because if you have zero, then we have a form which is not defined in mathematics. Fine, people? So this comes under the category of rational numbers. But how rational numbers are different, how rational numbers are different from fractions. How they are different from fractions, right? So that is, again, a question. and. Uh, it is a it is very important question. One has to answer this. See, both of them they are represent they are represented by p over q format, right? You can take a over b, p over q, whatsoever uh, you know you may feel comfortable with. But rational numbers they can be negative. I told you that uh, p uh, is a part of integer. Q is also a part of integer except zero. However, in fractions, this p and q they must be what. Natural number and whole number. P can be whole number. However, Q can only be natural number. 
right? P belongs to whole number, Q belongs to natural number. That's it. So fractions are always positive. So that is the major difference that I wanted to point out here. So let us start from where we left. So uh, this this sign, this symbol is known as, let me use, my, uh, not highlighter, laser pen. So this symbol is known as Upsilon, where I have, you know, uh, uh, hovering around. This is known as Epsilon, E-P-S-I-L-O-N. Okay. In mathematics, the meaning of this is belongs to. Q belongs to I. However, Q cannot be zero. That is what uh, we have written, right? This particular symbol represents subset. Subset means, suppose we have natural numbers uh, from one going till infinity. But if I have taken one and two out of this one, two, three, four, right? I've taken them out. So this is actually a subset of this bigger set, one, two, three, four going till infinity. So that represents subset. So natural number is a subset of whole number, obviously, because whole numbers are getting started from zero. And if you have taken one, two, three, four out of uh, zero, one, two, three, four, right? So that can be treated as a subset. Whole numbers are subset of integers. Integers are subset of rational numbers. Rational numbers are subset of real numbers. So real numbers are the combination of rational numbers and irrational numbers. Fine. So let us move to our next slide. Learning outcomes, we will see uh, what exactly irrational numbers are. So irrational numbers are those numbers that cannot be expressed in P over Q form. Example, root two, root three, root five, right? So these are the examples. Root 11, they cannot be represented in P over Q format. Can you figure out the difference between fractions and rational numbers? Yes, we have figured this out. Fractions are positive, however, rationals can be negative, right? Every irrational number is what? Is it a natural number? No. Is it an integer? No. Is it a whole number? No. Is it a real number? Yes. Real numbers are the combination of rational numbers and irrational numbers. If you can revisit this slide. Right? So this answers your question. Simple question. I guess. Next question is, all integers are irrational numbers. Is it always true? Always false? Sometimes true? And none of this. All integers are irrational numbers. So... I'll give you one minute to think on this, right? In case if you want, I can uh, switch to timer mode, but uh, I don't think the timer is needed for one minute. So obviously no, right? B happens to be the correct answer. Which of the following is not an irrational number, right? Root three, root 12, root 10 and root 16. So if you have uh, gone through with squares and square root, Right, root 16 is what plus minus 4 because what do we understand by this root symbol? Let us have a look here. We should be you know jumping uh, to another mode and I'll be using a uh, different marker. Suppose we have root of a, what does that mean? Right, how, how do you calculate root of something? Let us take an example. Let us take an example of let us say under root 25. Right, that means by what number? You should be multi. Okay, let me not take it here. This represents what? You need to focus on the number and you need to think of it like this. That by what number? Let us say x. When you multiply it with itself, you should be having the product as 25. So how do you uh, find the value of x? Right? You can go with hidden trial. Obviously, they both are going to be same. So 5 into 5 will be 25. That means root of 25 will be 5. However, it can also be minus y into minus y because when you multiply two negatives, you'll get positive. So that is why we add here plus and minus, right? In front of the number. It can be positive, it can be negative. So that is how we calculate root of anything. So root of 16, according to the question given to us, root of 16 will be, can I write it like this? Or can I also express it in this manner? Minus 4 into minus 4. It gives us what? 4. It gives us what? Minus 4. Is it? Pairing is formed. So we say that root 16 is what? Plus minus 4. Fine, people. Okay. So let's move to our slides again. Now, this is going to be most important part of this particular introductory session. 
we will be projecting row two on number line. So that is a, a tedious task in itself, but let us see how we'll be, you know, doing this. And I told you that this is just an introductory session. So we'll be, you know, discussing a lot more on this because this is something that will also be troubling you in great depth. Fine. So once you are thorough with the understanding of what it is, what do we understand by non-terminating, non-repeating, recurring? So if, if everything is clear in your head, then it is very easy for you to excel in great depth. Fine. We'll be representing root to a number line, but before then this, I just wanted to give you an insight of what do we understand by Pythagoras. All right. So pardon me for you know bad figures because I'm not that good with mathematics, but not no, with with the mathematical figures, right? Drawing. The mathematical figures drawing is itself a tedious task. See, so that is why I told you, please pardon me for this. What I'll do, I'll be, you know, making this with the help of free hand. Okay, let us nomenclate it. Let us call this as P, Q, and R. So triangle P, Q, R is a right angle triangle where right angle is at R. Right? Though uh, this hypotenuse is not looking decent, but still you need to consider I'm not that good with mathematical drawings, right? Sometimes uh, uh, when, you know, complicated figures are to be drawn, then I need to think uh, twice before, you know, making this on whiteboard. However, you on practical notes, the shapes are automatically available uh, using the tools. But for few things, these are not available. So we need to draw it, right? Now the side that is opposite to 90 degree is known as hypotenuse and this is the longest side of this triangle. PR is also known as perpendicular and QR is known as base. How base and perpendicular can be interchanged, right? Now, if you can follow uh, why, why I am calling this uh, in context of Pythagoras, Pythagoras gave us something and he stated out that if you square hypotenuse right then it will be equal to the square of base plus square side square of perpendicular so this is the relation that pythagoras gave us fine and we call this as pythagoras theorem and why do we need to get this implemented because they are asking us to represent root 2 right suppose if we have a number line like this and zero is our marker if I'll select one unit distance, 0 to 1 re represents one unit distance. I have selected one unit distance and I have taken this as a base. And I have also, whatever, you know, the measurement that I have taken here, I have also, you know, taken one measurement, walk one unit here. So this represents one, one unit. Unit means we don't know what exactly, you know, the magnitude that it is representing. Right. Now, if I'll try to have hypotenuse of this triangle and this is forming a right angle triangle. Then how do I calculate hypotenuse? Let us call this as h, which is one square plus one square. And this is h square. So h can be calculated as one square plus one square, which is nothing but root two. So that means we are able to get this as root two. Now we'll see the beauty of this. How do we actually project it on number line? Whatever root two that we have, you put your compass right here, one point of your compass here, and measure this length. And whatever this length is, now you need to project it on number line like this in form of an arc. Wherever this arc cuts this number line, that will be your root 2 representation. So obviously root 2 is greater than 1, 1.414. Fine. Let us move back to our slides. We have uh, taken any uh, a line, right? So line is... Uh, uh, extending indefinitely in both the directions of any length and we have taken one segment out of it which is of one unit and after that we have taken another one unit uh, in form of perpendicular and then we have applied Pythagoras. Once we have joined AC, now this, this serves as hypotenuse, it is very easy for us to calculate the, this length which is root 2, right, that I have shown you. So this is going to be root 2 and now whatever root 2 that you have here, this is going to be root 2. So 
I am not able to write it. And once you project it here, right, by measuring this length, then this particular thing will give you what? The measurement of root. Fine, people. So this is how you represent something on number line. And it is very easy and very practically possible when you actually, uh, you know, go for higher dimensions, such as root 3, you should be taking help of root 2. Because ultimately, you need to think of it like this, that what if I be, you know, uh, given with, uh, I need to calculate any hypotenuse as such, where root 3 should be, you know, the final answer. This is something that you should be keeping in your mind. So we'll be reconsidering this fact in next session as well. But whenever root 3, root 5, something is to be represented in this manner. So this is known as what we say, uh, a cyclic uh, or a spherical view, right? That will be seen in next course, next uh, session, I mean. So root three can be drawn easily by taking root two as a base and one unit like this for pandemic. Again, you will get a, a hypotenuse of root three, then you project it on number line. Again, it will be greater than root two. So this is how you calculate it, right? This method is a spiral, right? So the spiral projection, and I'll also be giving you another method how we can actually get the values calculated. But uh, that may take some time because uh, this is a very long chapter in itself. And uh, in order to complete something, we must know what basics are. And if we are thorough with the understanding of basics, then it is easy for us to grab the concept. Right? So that is it. In case if you have any doubt as such regarding introductory session, you can uh, keep me informed. Uh, we'll be you know, taking your doubt in next session. Thank you so much. I'm ending this session. Bye. Take care.